All right, Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Recha Kodash. We will honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine, Shalom, Amin, in peace, and that being to the elect of the nation of Israel. The Hebrew Israelites come once again to prophesy the return of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, that being the one that the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and the downfall of this man's society, his empire. So we're going to start, Lord, in Lamentations 2, try to hit it all. No, we'll flow in the spirit from there. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger, and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger? The Lord has swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob, and hath not pitied. He has thrown down in his wrath the stronghold of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. Right, so we used to be in a good, a good position, man. You know, we had peace under certain kings. You know, we had peace in the time of Solomon. But ever since, you know, ever since we're a nation, we've always fucked up. You know, we've always slipped up. We've always ended up in slavery. Now that's that's the that's a continuous narrative throughout the scriptures. What you have to understand is this time that we get redeemed, this time we get brought back out of captivity, out of slavery, it's not gonna happen again. You know, but the times have to get more severe for that to you know reach the, the climax. So that's the time of Jacob's trouble. So there's no time is like that. Right? From from a nation was formed to that very same time. So from the first nation was ever created until the time of Jacob's trouble, there's never gonna be anything comparable. Which means the transatlantic slave trade which means that the rough and violent Hellenization period, you know, them throwing off, you know, cutting pregnant women's stomachs open, you know, killing circumcised children. You know, these are the, these are the same people, but they're going to increase in their wickedness, you know, as their desperation increases as well. Like it says, the devil knowing that he has but a short time, you know, will come down with great wrath. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 3. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel he hath drawn back his right hand before the enemy and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about he hath bent his bow like an enemy he stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion he poured out his fury like fire Right, and the daughter of Zion means the men, the women, the children. If you read about daughters of Zion, plural, yeah, that's talking about the women. The daughter of Zion, we are that proverbial woman. We're meant to be a, a chaste wife unto the Heavenly Father. You know, but we've been anything but that. We've been an adulterous harlot. You know, it talks about in Wisdom of Solomon, the fourth chapter. Them, the devising of idols, you know, the beginning of spiritual fornication. Fornication is illicit sexual behavior. You know, being a mo, bestiality, you know, certain you know, transgressions that are written, or transgressing the laws of sexual morality written in the scriptures. And that's what it is. For example, sex before marriage, they're saying Christianity is so-called. The sex before getting physically married on a document is fornication. No, it's not. Sex is marriage. You know, if you, sex, technically sex to anything, sex, if she's not a virgin, is adultery. You know, if, if you go with what Yahweh Shai said. You know, but truly sex is marriage. You know, so there's the whole, the whole, the whole, understanding of what's what's moral what's immoral has been corrupted you know it's been per perverted by this spiritual pervert you know, he's the one that's bringing out the false prophet he's the one that's bringing out all these church systems telling you what's right what's wrong but then they'll go and say right that's bad but now you can be a monk you know the pope went and sanctified so called that you know said that marriage is acceptable but when you go into the scriptures what does it say it says man and woman We've fallen very low as a people. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 5. The Lord was as an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the dot of Judah mourning and lamentation. Now is the, is the Lord our enemy? Absolutely not. We behave adversarial to him. So he just gave the judgment that he told us from the beginning. Why was it not told to Moses to tell the children of Israel? These are what you need to do. This is what you must not do. And if you do this, this will happen. And if you do this, this will happen. 
Yeah, we were told that. So no, the Lord is not our enemy. He's simply our enemy because he told us the truth. Like Apostle Paul said, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? He told us the truth. He said that he, he would punish us if we did that. We did that and he carried out his word. That's, but we were an enemy unto him. So it became like unto an enemy to us. This is Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. It said, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they may, might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. That's what it comes back to. It always comes back to us. We always have to take accountability for that. You know, we can complain all day about the heathen. You know, and the heathen, yeah, they've done some wicked works. But how did they get to do that? They got to do that through us transgressing, through us falling off. It's the book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 10. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. Yeah. Right, and that's correct, because the law, all right, is life itself, yeah. right? And, the, and to depart from, you know, the law leads to death. Okay. The wages of sin as well, death. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 and 20 said, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day, to record against this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love Yahweh thy power, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahweh swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Right, so the life is what? The life is the law, and death is departing, is sin. Book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law is the apple of thine eye. Right? Proverbs, chapter 9, as well. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Okay? So, you know, keeping the commandments, all right, is that's what's going to, you, know, um, you know, keep us sound, all right, and help us draw closer to our power. Okay? Now, if you're forced to keep the commandments, right, someone comes and holds you at knife point, says, right, keep the Sabbath, holds you at knife point, right, make sure you're not eating this, make sure you're eating that. You know, you don't truly believe it. You're not going to get saved from that. You know, it's good, it's profitable. You know, you might not die as quick. But are you going to get saved from that? Are you going to get the salvation that the Heavenly Father is requiring, that diligence, that belief? So it starts with faith. And through true faith brings keeping the commandments. Now, we're not going to keep every single commandment in the flesh. You know, so we have to have that that belief that in Yahweh Shai is the media and intercessor for that. And that's not to say we make void the law, you know, nay, we establish the law through faith, as Apostle Paul said. That's right, because, you know, faith without works, you know, is dead. Okay? And, you know, if you love yourself, you will keep the law, and if you love your neighbour, alright, you will strive to do so. Okay? And that's what it talks, it talks about loving your neighbour as you love yourself. There's no one in their right mind that's going to go and stop, you know, shoot themselves up. What do you see Jake doing to his own people, his neighbour? You know, for what? For the love of money more time. The love of money is the root of all evil. And really that's idolatry. You're putting something on a pedestal above the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father and His law should come first. And everything else should be secondary. Right. And you need to weigh it up in the balance. Is this a righteous thing? Or is this causing me to err? Causing me to be in error? Keep my commandments and live in my laws, the apple of thine eye. Alright, and what's the apple of your eye, your pupil? And when you look in the mirror, you see yourself. Alright, and you know, you're not going to forsake yourself. You're not going to harm yourself. Alright? If you, you know, keep the law. And that's what keeps you in a sane mind, you know, in your right mind, the law. That's how you be. When you go into the scriptures and it talks about be sober, be diligent, be vigilant. Now what's it talking about? It's talking about in this law. Now you can have a drink of wine. You could technically be, you know, inebriated, intoxicated, but still not drunk, you know, spiritually. You know, not intoxicated spiritually because you're maintaining the, the right path. You know, which is suffering now in the grief when you read about being sober. It's talking about going into the scriptures and remaining in it, abiding in it. And the Lord isn't, isn't what Christianity on the plantation has taught us to be. You know, void of judgment, happy, lets everything happen. This is Psalm 47 and verse 2. It says, For Yahweh, most high, is terrible. He's a great king over all the earth. Now, if you hear about a king, a ruler, that is terrible, you know, it inspires terror, inspires fear. You're not going to be, want to be fucking around. 
I don't really want to take taking a piss. You know, hope what do you say? Using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. You now you're gonna to want to get in order. You know, especially if you know that the judgment is coming. But then it goes back to that as uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, the sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So because people aren't getting put to death immediately for adultery, for witchcraft, for idolatry, then everyone everyone runs rampant, everyone does whatever they want. You know, and these laws won't be enacted until the kingdom. So that's what the thing about faith comes back to. You know, if it's easy, if everyone sees, you know, seeing is believing the same. If everyone sees it, then all right, everyone believes it. But the faith is a gift, so we have to give thanks for that. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 6. And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He hath destroyed the places of the assembly. Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, has caused the solemn feast and Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion and hath despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. And in Mystery Babylon right now, uh, barely anybody is keeping the Sabbath. You know, even within Israel, people keeping the Sabbath thought they keep it Friday to Saturday, you know, which is just like the, the JJs. Yeah. You know, that's all it is, it's just a remix of that. So hardly anyone's keeping it. You know, and then you might you might have it, you might keep it, you might have it off, you might get called into work, you know, you might get, get made unclean. You might have been on public transport, for example, and say, brother, these transport to come back, go to and from work, you know, and he finishes just before sundown, he can't get it and, and he breaks the Sabbath like that. You know, this whole world is defiled. More time when you step out into the world knowing, right, I have to deal with these people, I have to buy this, I have to sell this, you're going to probably become unclean, you know, just by, and it's not that, you know, you're not allowed to be unclean, it's not a sin to be unclean, but it is on the Sabbath, you know. That's so, right. So we live in a perpetually unclean state, and then if that person didn't wash, didn't have this by sundown, and they don't keep the you know the what's it say the ordinance of baptism. You know, so they don't they don't keep right. I need to wash as soon as I have sex. As soon as I have it, it talks about the seed of copulation. Right, I need to wash this. I need to change this. I need to do that. Well, people don't do that. You know, so they'll they'll go into work next day and clean. You know, it's just like that um that game plague. If you ever played that, you know, one person goes to this person. So everyone's unclean, man. This is a whole unclean. They don't keep the land sabbaths. You know, there's so many things. And if it was just on that, you know, his whole system could go down because he didn't keep the land Sabbath. You know, because he didn't keep the cleansing, you know, ordinances. And that's, and that's where grace, you know, comes in to, to cover us from where we fall short, all right? Because there's certain things that we can't help, you know, um, you know, help but fall into, into captivity, like fall into the traps that Esau has set up, you know? This is uh, Lamentation chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord has cast off his altar, he has abhorred his sanctuary, he has given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of their palaces, they have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of a solemn feast. The Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion, he has stretched out a line, he has not withdrawn his hand from destroying, therefore he made the ram, sorry, therefore he made the uh, rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. You know, and that did actually happen. That happened a couple of times. You know, Israel was sieged. Right now we're besieged. We're behind enemy lines on all sides. There's no point you can point. There's no place, excuse me. There's no place you can point to and say, well, this is the black man's land. This is the Native American man's land. You know, because you'll say, I'm a black man. Well, what land is that? The land of black. You now, we know that we're the Israelites. We're the children of the Most High. It's not just you know, the so-called black man. The Native American is so-called Hispanic. You know, and all these, all these people that look like these other nations but actually go back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You can't point and say, well, this is this land. You know, because it's, 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 it's under occupation. And as Yahweh Shai said, you know, Luke 21 and 24, the land shall be trodden down of the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You, know, you will be led captive into all nations by the sword. So that's where we are today. We're behind enemy lines. No one can say, oh, well, I'm the land of, I'm the land of black. This is the land of Hispanic. That just means Spanish speaking. You know, so when we say, all right, we're the Israelites, then the question of, well, where's your land, you know, comes back to, and we're not going to get it until we get redeemed, until we get put back in that land. Now, as we read, the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that was from the Great River, right, the River Nile, as it's called, the River Euphrates. Right. So we've been put away, you know, we've been, we fell away, like I said, 2 Thessalonians 2, 
fallen away the apostasy it's used religiously like an apostate we use that term a lot in islam you know, this, if someone used to be a muslim then they for example they came into the truth and that's they call them an apostate but we fell away from our land our culture our heritage and everything so we're we're a lost people we're like an, an unprogrammed people you know we're meant to be programmed with the law programmed with our culture with righteousness now we're programmed with you know, sorcery, idolatry, witchcraft. That's the so-called black man's culture. Adultery, you know, drunkenness. That's all it is when they talk about black culture. You know, the TV, MTV, this, this, that. What is it? It's nothing but, you know, loving hip-hop and, you know, all these just, you know, just uh, vile things. Degeneracy. That, yeah, that we're caught up in. The majority of our people are caught up in. You know, we don't learn anything from that. We don't profit from that. It's just all distractions, all right? We learn wickedness. Exactly. You know, as it says in the scripture, our people are wise to do evil. Now, in another scripture, it says the, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. You know, so our, our people aren't even wise to do evil. They, <laughs> they're just stupid. They just have the, the, the knowledge of it. That's right, and then perpetuate it. <laughs> yeah, so it becomes when... It basically, the, we know who it is. It's the JJs, really. You know, the top of Hollywood, the top of music. So they get certain archetypes of, right, this is what a, a Jake should be, you know, a so-called black man, Hispanic man should be. They push that out, and then the young ones see it and they emulate it themselves. So it becomes a self-fulfilling you know, narrative. Now they can't say, well, well, we never made this. He came up with this on it. Yeah, because you, you've already you know, puppeted, and, uh, what do you say, art, uh, created it, you know, to the point where you don't need to do that anymore. You've set up such an effective system of idolatry, of again degeneracy, and now it's just it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and it is all the curses. And that vicious cycle continues because you know, they just you know that we got you know our people who look up to the celebrities of our own people as uh, role models. All right? <laughs> you would never go to the you know the the JJ community and say, well, who are the entertainers in your community? These are the leaders. You know the so-called leaders are basketballers. Athletes, rappers, what what knowledge of spiritual matters, economic matters, of political matters are they meant to be? You know, and, and certain ones will call it out. They say, man, I'm just here to play basketball, man. I'm not, I'm not here for all this shit. You know, but it's only Jake that's got to such a low level that other nations can try and convince you that your leaders are athletes. You know, and they're nothing. They've they've got no intelligence. They've got no leadership qualities. That's right. That's why it says, you know, the whole head is sick. That's it, so you should be following the scriptures. You should be following Yahweh Shai. You know, but this society is going to teach you, follow an athlete, you know, into the Greekest fashion. It's going to teach you the complete opposite doctrine. You know? And that's why we're in such a low state, because we don't follow. We should follow. We don't follow Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 9. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. The king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. And the law is no more. Now it says in Peru, didn't it? Form one. The law does what? It endures forever. So how can the law be gone if the law endures forever? Because we fell off. We were meant to be on point forever. You know, Solomon's kingdom, what was it Prophet, um, Prophet Nathan gave to Dawada? What did he tell him? He said, Your king, this kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. So from Solomon's kingdom was set up, it was meant to be everlasting. But Solomon transgressed. And what's the, what's the way Solomon transgressed? By going to the woman and going into their gods. You know, and that's a big snare. And the woman is a big snare. He says in uh, Sirach 19 and 2, Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. You now, women can also be likened to you know, a doctrine as well. Talks about them that have not been defiled with women, it's saying not being defiled with doctrines. It's the same way we, we're meant to, same way you're meant to love your wife, you're meant to love this truth. You know, the truth is meant to be your first wife, you know, you're meant to give her all the attention. It talks about the, in 1 Corinthians, there's a difference between um, a married man you know, and an unmarried man. Because a married man is going to be worried, well, how do I please my wife? What do I do this? How do I do that? And that's where his attention, his focus is going to be. Whereas a man unmarried, you know, his focus is going to be solely on the Lord. You know, it should be in the, in the righteous manner. So we need to...
here to be serving the Lord. I'm not worried about serving the woman. Obviously, you protect, you provide, you do whatever you look to do. You do as a man. You don't make her your God. You know, that's insane. That's how Solomon went off. So that's how we, really how we ended up losing that kingdom. That's how the kingdom split. There wouldn't be any kingdom of Judah and kingdom of Israel, nor the southern kingdom of the world. So simping can lead to idolatry. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 10. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. And that sack, sackcloth is a, a custom of mourning. They talked about us prophesying in sackcloth, going into when we're in a period of hardcore slavery. You know, cast, putting dust upon your head, that's a, that's a custom of mourning as well. I thought it's about them will do that when Babylon's destroyed. Right. Yeah, so we we are and that's us. You know, you can't point, right, look at all this look at this family. Everyone in here is worshipping Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. But that's what it used to be like. You know? Obviously we all, we always transgress, we always slipped up. But holistically we had a culture of righteousness. Now we have a culture of nothing but de degeneracy. Right? Our true culture still remains. There's still true cultures in here, but what's acted out in the flesh. If I Jake, there's anything but that. It's contrary to the Bible, man. Even what they teach them in the churches, where they think, oh, I'm getting close to the Most High. You know, then they try to emulate that. Well, you're probably going to end up worse, you know, because you'll get content, you'll get comfortable thinking that you're in a better case. So you won't be so concerned. You won't be so sincere. Oh, man, I've been doing this for ages. I, how many times you hear Jake, oh, I know the Bible. You know, my grandma taught me the Bible. I grew up in the church. I know the Bible. It's like, cool, all right. So what's this? Oh, I don't know. What about this? Oh, I don't know. And these are simple questions. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also will reject thee. Sorry, reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. Right? Since our people have, you know, decided to, you know, depart from the Lord. Okay. You know, and started to you know do as they please, lean on their own understanding. You know, the Lord has rejected, rejected uh, them. Okay, and that's why you know, you know, all the knowledge is contained in the Bible, but they don't seek it, they don't read it, they don't research. All right, or go into anything, and therefore they're ignorant to, to it. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now you get them Jakes that do research. What do they want to research? Chemic. <laughs> want to research this. Reason. Well, Easter goes back to Ishtar. Ishtar was a black woman. We should actually celebrate you. They, they bring some all, all manner of shit. You know, but if they put that diligence and that faith into the scriptures, you know, but that clearly wasn't their law. So we're not quiet. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22 said, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. You know, so Jake can tell you in a song you know, how to whip up one you know, manner of sorcery into a next to make more money, to do this, to do that, how to do this, how to um, commit adultery more effectively. But Jake can't tell you shit. You know, he can't tell you anything of value. He can't tell you how to keep the Sabbath. You know, he can't tell you how to react in a you know, high pressure situation. But the scriptures give you all this. You know, a soft answer turns away wrath. Teach you how to, how to deal. You know, the Proverbs, Ecclesiasticus, Syrah. You know, you go into them, they teach you the, the, some wise words of wisdom. You know, when you apply that, you begin to see, you know, things can run much more smoothly, even in a state of curse. You know, so imagine when we're on top, and imagine if we'd abided by it from the beginning. You know, but again, the Lord had his decree. We'll get that in the kingdom. This is the time to repent. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 11. Mine eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth. For the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the sucklings swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. Uh, we're going to go into a time of famine again. You know, if, if Jacob's trouble was going to be worse than cargo, what is it the transatlantic slave trade has been in cargo ships, worse than Hellenization. You know, we know famines have come on the earth before. We know in the time of Egypt, for example, you know, they didn't have anything. But guess what? We're going into times of famine. Second Ezra prophesied of it. Yahweh Shai prophesied of famines, pestilences, 
well as rumours it was. So these, this shit's coming, bro. You understand me? There's no, there's no escaping it unless you give your help by Shami Al Shai. Now, as it's written, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. The average Jake is not meditating on these things. You know, he's thinking how to club, how to get this, how to how to smash those. You know, that, that shit's tired out, man. That shit's worn out. You know, it's about getting close to the Heavenly Father or, or getting close to the grave. That's what it's about. That's right. The majority of our people are trying to make it here and prolong this man's kingdom as well. You know? You've got to maintain and that's it. You know, you're not, we're not looking to build up a fucking... You know, a mansion. Let me think for if, if 60 years time, brother, you could have your family and I'm mine. You know, we do. What the fuck? No, we're just looking to maintain, man. Yeah, cool. Provide for your house, absolutely. No, but when you're looking to do this, I'm I'm gonna sell my <laughs> I'm gonna sell my my garment and I'm gonna buy me, you know, a, a this and I'm gonna do this and then I'll turn it into this. They're not even thinking on tomorrow. You know, what I'm saying, what did James? They say James, Lord willing, you know, and that's concerning tomorrow. You should say, Lord willing, I'm going to do this tomorrow. So how much more so if you're talking 10, 30 years? We're not looking for that. You know, we're looking for this to go ASAP. You know, every time we see an article on Bitcoin, sorry, crypto, you know, every time we see an article on the MOTB, we get fucking excited, man. You know, you'll hear brothers in the video, you can hear the excitement in, the, in our voice. You know? But, so, but, you know, people, people get so uh, disenchanted by that. You know, oh, it's going to crypto, oh, what do I do? No, okay, I'll put it in. Or they'll get excited about it, you know, thinking they're going to maintain. Why are we getting excited? Because we know we're getting the fuck out of here. You know, we know that's one step closer to salvation for us, you know, destruction for this society. So we're excited. Exactly. And that's how you measure the times, right? Measure the times through the prophecies and filtering it through the scriptures, right? That's how we gauge where we are, you know, towards the end of this, uh, this world, at this age. Micah chapter 2 verse 10 Arise ye and depart For this is not your rest Because it is polluted It shall destroy you Even with the sword destruction right. Like this world is polluted You know It's polluted our minds It's polluted in every way Shape and form we can think of Spiritually, morally Alright Physically of course yep. Socially Economically, financially All right. of the ills man Exactly It's an ill society That's why you know if, You know If your house went to come back Man no flesh would be saved Right. That's why the days are shortened. It's insane. It says that the righteous shall scarcely be saved. You know, so where would the ungodly and the sinner appear? Well, you've got Jake in the comments. Well, what about this E? What about this E? Will he be saved? Will that be saved? My boss has been really nice to me. What the fuck, man? You need to be focused on yourself. Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 13. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Desire One? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? What's the answer? Who can? Only Yahweh Shah. You know, with the, through the power of Yahweh, because he gets the power through Yahweh. But only Yahweh Shah. You know, and is it going to be the whole nation that's healed? No. And the elect. And then through them, the, the nation will be brought back. You know, so ultimately, yeah, that's why it says ultimately, you know, in the end, all Israel will be saved. But there's a, there's a process. And trust me, you prefer to get saved on this side than going through some you know, traumatic situation, as will be for the great majority of people. Now, is it not written, the slain of the Lord shall be many? You know, so it's not just a, a few. But, oh, look, there goes Jerome. There goes Devante. You know, and it's done the rest of the gym. No, man, it's only going to be Jerome and Devante that are getting saved. You know, does it not say there'll be two of a city? You know, one should be taken, one should be left. Two women grinding at the mill. You know, so this isn't, this isn't about a numbers game. And that's what a lot of groups fail to realise. We got, we got like 100,000 people marching in the street, bro. <laughs> what, what? All right, cool. Cool, that's good. They know they're Israelites. But how many of them are preaching? How many of them are teaching? How many of them are keeping the commandments, staying diligent? How many of them are doing it? Because they like it. You know, and it looks good. I feel good with a beard. I feel good in a purple garment. <laughs> Shots fight. You know, or how many people are doing it because they sincerely care about you. How about show me how shy. You know, and I'd be very surprised if half of them were. You know, so it's not about a numbers thing. What did Yahweh Shai say? Wide is the way, broad is the way that leads to destruction. You know, but few be there that find that way to life. Paraphrasing that. 
You know, so it's going to be a few people that find that eternal life. So they'll be looking for a great multitude, of great numbers, and be they'll be disheartened because there's not, you know, five thousand people, you know, that are saying the same thing. You know, when it's all said and done, there'll be one hundred forty-four thousand of that of that you know, great kingdom rulership and the rest of the elect. And that that'll be more than enough. And that'll be the perfect number. Let me not say more than enough. That'll be the perfect number. You know, until then, just focus on on keeping it. Uh, people, sorry, so just add. Uh, yeah, just agree. And yeah, little sanctuary as well is, is what the, the Lord is dealing with. You know, not necessarily these massive congregations. You know, when you get when you get numbers, then you get a lot of people in the flesh would be like willing to you know go to that person. Or that, or that person doesn't like it. I know the, the two thirds of my organization don't really like what I'm saying here. So let me just you know say it in a, in a softer way. Or, you know, we're going to give you a role regardless. So that's what you need to look. You can't look for someone that's gonna uh, like hedge. You can't look for someone that's gonna hedge on such an important matter. Now that's why, even though when you hear bitter things, you know, the apostles, for example, bringing out the Deuteronomy 22, 28, and 29, then you begin to see, well, you know, they've, they've clearly not got any ulterior motives. That's what the scriptures say. You go into it. You know, people say you're weird, you're a creep, and they'll try to say that isn't an ulterior motive. But why would you? If you were really doing that, you were practicing that in this society. Why on earth would you teach it? You know, you have to think about that. You know, so when you hear bitter things, hear things that aren't too popular, that aren't going to get all the women, that aren't going to get all the, you know, the, the flashy approval of these Israelite celebrities, then you begin to think, well, clearly, that seems more sincere than someone, you know, blending and, and hedging and then going into the scripture and breaking it down incorrectly. You know, they, they can clearly see what the word means, but they're trying to find a way around it as not to offend someone. You know, that's, that's weak. That's not a true leader. Now, Yahweh Shai wouldn't be doing that. Yahweh Shai taught as one that had an authority and not as the scribes. Now that's what stood out about him. So them that are following Yahweh Shai, would they not be of that same ilk? Mm. That's right. Now, just like uh, bringing out the fact that, you know, the Lord might not save, you know, your family members. Okay. I mean, of course, you know, you have to meditate upon that. But, you know, naturally, you're not going to always want to, you know, think that, you know, your family members are not going to make it. But, yeah, you know, it's in the scriptures. Right? That's right, you know, especially you know, if you have like children or anything like that. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity, to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at thee, they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. You know, and I've witnessed, Salaki, Salaki, but I've witnessed that. You know, I was dropping off a co worker from work after he'd fin he finished the shift, you know, and he lives in the, the highly populated Jake you know, area, and it was just after carnival as well. And he was just going, Man, what is wrong with these people, man? You know, they just stand, they get drunk all day, they play loud music. They do. I was thinking, Yo, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So we've become a what? A byword and a proverb of reproach. You know, among these nations, we're not seeing a shit. In fact, we are seeing a shit. Less than shit. You know, and that's what Jake's become. Right. All that pass by, clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the door of Jerusalem. Saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? Right, so really, in, in them, they know. They know there's something unique. You know, because they see us, uh, what do you say? Winning all the uh, athletics, for example, the Olympics, the this, the that. You know, all, this, all the stuff that the, the Greeks made, you know, we excel in that. You know, WWE, the most ca charismatic, you know, <laughs> people that people want to emulate is your, your Kofi Kingston's, your Rey Mysterio's. The Rock. The, yeah, <laughs> they're all Jake, man. You know, they run that. And now you've got the, you had them, the Uzos as well. You know, they're, I think, at the same seed as The Rock, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, they come across as Jakey. You know, but all the all them entertainers, the top movie stars that everyone wants to be like, the rappers, the hip hoppers, you know, all this shit that's this Greek Greekish and was meant to be, you know, dominated by E, is Jake that's taking the top of that. You know, and then your little E children come out and want to emulate <laughs> emulate Jake. You see that in the even the defiled drill culture now. You see all these little, you know, what you can only presume to be E's. You know, they want they, they even try to walk like Jake. You can tell, you know how Jake Jake's got the you know the rhythm and everything. They try to emulate that, you know. But you can tell it's not natural. I seen. I thought I seen you two years ago. You didn't walk like that. <laughs> what yeah. happened, bro? 
you know. But that's that's the great far-reaching influence that Jake has in a defiled state. So imagine how inclined the nations will truly be when they see, oh, these are righteous people. It talks about that in Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Well, sorry, Deuteronomy uh, 4, 7 and 6. You know, let me read it. It's the book of Deuteronomy, which means the second law. Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting of verse 6. Deuteronomy 4 and 6. It says, start verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh my power commanded me, that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath the most high so near unto them, as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great, that hath statutes and judgments so righteous, as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest, thy, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially, especially the day that thou stoodest before Yahweh thy power in Horeb, when Yahweh said to me, gather, the, gather me the people together, and I'll make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, that they may teach their children. So there it is. You know, the nations are meant to hear of this law, see us, see us enacting it, you know, putting out the statutes, doing the commandments, carrying out the judgments, and saying, wow, this is a wise and understanding people. You know, and that will happen in the kingdom, even though there's going to be a, a severe judgment you know, that has to take place, and get everyone back in there, or get everyone to their right mind, to the right mind. You know, but when it's all said and done, they're going to enjoy it. You know, they're, they're in mourning now. They're certainly not enjoying this. They enjoy certain benefits they have. You know, they enjoy the, the short-term benefits. But when they see the long-term impact, you know, that, that's the influence Jake's going to have in that day. You know, it says, they shall be, ye shall be the priests of the Lord. You know, they shall be vine dressers, plowmen, and ye shall be priests of the Lord. So that's the influence Jake's going to have in that day. Jake right now is a priest unto Baal. You know, and he's leading a lot of these nations astray. You now he's been led astray, and therefore he's leading these nations astray. Similarly, Hellenization. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 16. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. The Lord has done that which he had devised. He has fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He has thrown down and hath not pitied, and he has caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He has set up the horn of thine adversaries. And this was to punish us, to vex us, you know, to make us realize the severity of our transgression. You know, it's like a, it's like a badly behaved child. If you just let him keep getting away with it, he doesn't care. You know, but if he's thinking, man, I might, I might get clip around the ear if I do that shit again. You know, he's gonna think twice. You know, and this is this has got to be the final one. You know, Jacob's trouble has got to be the most gruesome, most brutal, most violent, you know, thing taking place on the earth ever. You know, and that's there's great reason for that. We're trying to we're not trying to get caught up in that. We're trying to get caught up in the cloud. You know, we're trying to escape that. But there's only one way. It's not by trying to make haste in time of trouble. It's not by trying to save yourself. Well I've got this, I've got that. You know, I've got them um them fire lighters for when I have to go into what are you on about man? You, know, you don't need to be thinking that you need to be thinking about what can I do to please the heavenly father? You know, he will provide it. So seek ye the kingdom first, the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, and all these things should be added unto you. You know, clothing, food, water, shelter. Lamentation chapter one verse six, and from the daughter of Zion all her beauty is departed, her princes have become like hearts that find no pasture, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old when her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her. The adversary saw her and did mock at her Sabbath. Okay. It talks about as well the nation suffered not as to, put, to be put into graves. You know, they didn't teach us, well, you're the Israelites, this has happened to you, this is the reason why. You know, some of them know it, 
certainly the elites of B, they're definitely not, because they'll be paying big, big cash, big, big bucks for you to, to never hear them that. You know, but then they'll, they'll mock it, they'll put it in your face in, that, um, in certain TV programs. So, even in uh, some of the you know, South Park episodes, of, you know, they've even come out and told, you know, who, who the children of Israel are. You know? So you can see that you know, Esau's telling on himself. There right? is. And they'll, they'll, do it, they'll do it in a manner of mockery. You know, they'll put it in your face to, to mock how, how bait it is, but you still, how obvious it is, you still can't see it. Right. No, but yeah. they're never going to tell you since they make a lesson and say, right, look, you know, all jokes aside, this, this, that, this, this, that, they're not going to tell you that. There's no benefit to them. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And that great city is Babylon, the great America. All right. And the dead bodies represent the spiritual dead bodies, all right? They didn't know who we were. All right at that time all right which spiritually is called sodom in egypt where also our lord was crucified meaning exed out all right and that image of seizure bourget was propped up and uh, perpetuated okay and there the first time and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies in three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves okay So in the time of transatlantic slavery, three and a half days, you know, roughly 350 years of hardcore slavery, no one came in and stopped and said, listen, you're the Israelites, this is why this happened. If you want this to reverse, this is what you should do. Now that never happened. It wasn't until Elijah came back you know, to turn the hearts of the sons to the fathers. You know, and then we started you know, understanding and it, and it picked up from there, it progressed from there. So the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1 it said the hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry so that's what it means about the dead bodies lying in the street of the great city you know even certain leaders so called you know spoke on this Malcolm X spoke on this so he knew who the Israelites are you know, but he never sat down and said you know forget this Islam shit you know, this is the truth and start going into the script. He never did that. You know, but the scriptures, the, sorry, the Quran is not going to tell you that. The, the Quran doesn't give you do 20 and 20 years. It doesn't tell you about what's going to happen. You know, it tells you, in fact, about a heathen prophet and it tells you about other certain Arab prophets. You know, apparently um, Jethro, you know, goes back to Shuaib and he was a, an Arab prophet, you know, according to the Quran, which that's completely off. This is our Quran, this is our measuring stick, this is our canon, this is how we know what's true and what's false. You know, these other books, they might have bits of truth in it. But to tell an effective lie, you need to know the truth. You now, if I say the grass is green and the sky is blue, that's true. Now, if I tell you the grass is the grass is actually red and the sky is yellow, well, it, that all of that, you know, you know, all of that is wrong. But if I say, yeah, the grass is green, but because of the shade of green, you know, it actually makes this. And I start doing all this shit. I add a little bit of truth in there, and I manipulate it to make you believe the lie. Now, that's a, a, what a lot of these books do. That's how they try to catch it. That's the bait. Verse. Verse 3, he said, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, Yahweh, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and said unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. And that's what it's about, these dry bones, spiritually dead Israelites, hearing the word of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shai, to come back, to gather together as many, you know, by his spirit, that are of the elect. That's what it's about, the dry bones. Now, I remember that, that speech, it was Malcolm, he goes, You're the dry bones, you're the Lazarus. It's like, well, if you know that, what you do, you know, and I wonder where he learned that from. Right. A lot of these uh, elder post star often speaks on Khalid Muhammad, for example, going down to One West, you know, learning about certain things to cut the Christians, learning about certain things to cut the JJs, you know, and then going about his business. But none of them were sitting in, you know, and, be, and learning and going, right, I'm an Israelite, I'll grow my beard out, I'll stop doing this. Because you, you can, all right, cool, in the Quran it says you can't eat pork. But guess what? You can't eat lobster. You can't eat shellfish. You can't eat camel. You know that's confusion. And if the law was so perfect as um, we know it is, why did it need a, a reduction? You now they'll claim because it was corrupted. Well, no, you just you've made up a whole thing. That's corrupted, man. Also, the can't eat pork if it's the last thing on earth. As well. There it is. Yeah. All you say is Bismillah, which in the Hebrew would be Basham Allah in the name of the Most High. Now, in the name of the Most High, we'll go back to the story of the Maccabees. 
was it is it Eliezer? That's right. right. Yeah, 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 he's an old man up in age. You know, and they were saying, right, listen, eat some pork. He said, no. He said, right, listen, eat some, you know, lawful meat, for example, chicken, beef, you know, whatever it was, and we'll just pretend like it's pork. And he said, no, I'd rather die. So he wouldn't even, like the scriptures say, abstain, abstain from all appearances of evil. He wouldn't even pretend to eat pork to mislead some other Israelites. He would rather die. You know, so that's the, that's the true example to take on. And they always say, um, when they speak on how, uh, they say, when they say in their Shahada, they say Muhammad is his messenger. Well, what happened to all the Israelite messengers? And what happened to the Messiah? Because you all believe in the Messiah, so-called. But you see, you, you put an Ishmaelite heathen, you know, so-called prophet on a higher level than you do the Messiah. You know, so it shows you your religion is really an Ishmaelite religion. You know, it's, and it's pure confusion, man. You know, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing of that is true. You know, the only things that are true is that that lines up with the scriptures. You know, but they'll always put a, a weird fucking fruity twist upon it, man. Right. And they don't even believe that the Lord was crucified now. No, no, yeah. that's correct. They believe that. Somebody well, at least them. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's somebody it. else was put in the place, and then you know the, the the real Messiah was taken up by Allah, and then again, uh, yeah, someone else put on the cross. They don't believe. Yes, yeah, so to, yeah, so to, to deceive the people or something that they thought that they killed him. Now you, you all, you lot are deceiving the people. They also teach um, the Messiah didn't have a biological father. You know, they'll talk about Christianity this, Christianity that. You know, they'll come, they'll come at us with certain arguments about Christianity. You'll be like, hold on, the Bible doesn't even say that. You know, you gotta, you gotta know who you're dealing with, baby. You know, but it says there that he didn't have a biological father. Really? You know, some, go Sorry. Ahead, go. Really, Islam did come out of the Roman Catholic Church anyway. Right, right. And that's what they teach. Uh, yeah, they teach that, you know, Catholics teach that, you know, the Immaculate Conception. That, you know, the Lord didn't have a biological birth. Virgin birth, that's immaculate conception about the birth of Mary. That's it. Being, being of a you know, certain... So what I think. Yeah. But go, going into that, they, they, teach, they teach so much shit that's, for example, in the, um, the lost gospel of Mary, there's certain things that are in the Quran that it looks like you've just got it from there. So you've just picked up, you've just picked up a, bunch of, a bunch of books. You're saying, oh, I like that, I like that, I like that. You know, pick and mix. You know, you finish school, you go in two pound coin, you go in, right, I want some of these, I want some jelly jelly jams, I want some strawberries, that's what you've done, man, that's all it is. You know, but it says, and that's a heavy spirit, you know, when, once you get a brother in, it's, I'll see you in the kingdom, bro. you know, because more time, them are not coming back out of it. You know, they'll speak with the Arabic accent, and <laughs> like I don't to speak, so, you know, that shit's, a, that shit's a heavy, heavy spirit, man. You know, but this, it says, um, the elect will not be deceived. You know, if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Now, that's going to ease, you know, certain you know, tools, but he uses that as a tool. Religion is a big tool. There's, there's been famous quote, religion is used to control the masses. Well, yeah, false religion is. And the true religion, eventually, in the kingdom, will be used to control the masses to righteousness. Nothing wrong with control. If you, They will say it as well in philosophy. They say, if you could have an empirically objective, righteous, dictator that would be the best form of government you know to put it in worldly terms that's what it will be you know you'll be controlled you'll be forced to do what's what's pleasing to the heavenly father if you believe there is a god you believe he is righteous you believe whatever he says is righteous isn't it righteous to follow exactly what he says you know in whatever form that comes second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 18 Eliezer one of the principal scribes an aged man and of a well favoured countenance. Well, let, let me just say Salaki. In our in our today is being completely flipped. You know, Jake doesn't pay any reverence, you know, won't greet his elders, won't speak with you know any manner of decorum. But we used to respect especially elders, you know, ones that have been labouring in the word and doctrine how it speaks on, you know, ones that have been in gone through certain, you know, afflictions. So we, it's not just like if it was a young man, yeah, all right, it's an Israelite doing that, but an a, a, aged man, you have to understand how much influence he had in our culture. That's right. Verse 18, Eliezer, one of the principal scribes, an aged man and of well-favoured countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. So constraints, he was held you know, to open his mouth and eat swine's flesh. Right, which is Park, verse 19, but he, choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord with the torment. 
as it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things and or as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted right so you know I think, I think I went off on that I'm conflating two events I'm like because yeah. it was Eliezer he alright so he spat out the park I was saying that there was one that they tried to persuade and say right eat this um, you know, beef or lawful meat and we'll pretend like it's pork in, in front of people so uh, that's my mistake on that unless it goes on to say that that would see what you're saying to oh yeah uh, yeah that's right he chose rather to, you know to obey your habash and not you know consume pork because especially if he's an aged man that like everyone's on his right he's kept this he's kept that right at the end in your last few seconds you know you've, you've already lived you know, I'm not trying to sit in a morbid manner, but you've already lived, you've lived a righteous life, you know, you've got that status, you'll have, you know, your children be able to look at that, your grandchildren be able to look at that. So to stain it right at the end, you know, that's, that would be a horrific ending, man. You know, so you'd rather spit it out. Now, technically, you know, it's still a sin to touch pork, you know, but yeah. they, they put it up on him, you know, so they, they forced him like that. You know, but he spat it out, so he did everything in his power, everything in his control to re resist and reject that. You know, maintain so his integrity. Yeah. Bang. That's that's the point. That's the point. You said what I was trying to say in three sentences, in two words. That's it. He maintained his integrity. Right. Lamentations chapter two, and verse eighteen. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest, let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. So you say it's never too late to repent, you know, unless you've got the MOTB, <laughs> it's never too late to repent. So that's why we always push that. As much as we curse Jake out, it's not just for us to feel good. You know, it's for us to attempt to be used as vessels to inspire repentance within us. You know, we're we're in, we're, in, we're in a very low low place, man. You know, but guess what we do? We have the chance to repent. You know, every time you wake up, say for what you have Hashem you have because we could have gone. You know, we could have been taken. That's right. You know, and especially, well, more specifically, if you're not. You know, living true to this word. Verse 20. Behold, O Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and consider to whom you have done this. Shall the women eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? And then this, again, this is coming back. Famine. Just as the time in, in 70 AD, you had the women eating their children. Oh, you know, got cannibalism among all Israel. You know, was prevalent. You can watch on the documentary how they strategically, right? They cut off this wall, they cut off that wall. We're we're running through places, right? This is only for you know the priests. This is only for men. This is only, and every, you know that got that got disrupted because we're trying to you know escape, trying to live. Jeremiah chapter Jeremiah chapter nineteen verse eight, and I will make this city desolate and. And hissing, everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the sea in straightness. Wherewith their enemies, and they that seek their lives, shall straighten them. Right, and that's it written with curses as well. And I think Deuteronomy 28 and 66 around about. He talks about eating the flesh between your sons and your daughters. And that's, that's a horrific thing. To get to the point, you have to rationalize as well how, how gone and how malnourished and how you know, famished you must be to get to the point where that's a rational, logical decision in your mind. You know? That's very torturing because, you know, bit by bit, you know, you'll be consuming someone's flesh, right? You can maybe, you know, trying to save, save as much money as possible. And bit by bit, you'll be taking, you know, limbs. Right, you know, that's, that's something that's gonna. Yeah. You can see that's a, that's a visceral you know, image, man. Yeah. And we can say it, you know, say it in fashion, yeah, cannibalism, da, 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 but when you get down to the crux of the matter, as you say, 
we get down into what it actually is and with each step you must take watch and process that's horrific man and this is the severity of the times we're moving into you know jacob's trouble so that's why we need to get right that's why repentance is now seek you how by hashem you shy while it may be found call you upon him while he's near and it's too late soon you know Lamentations chapter 2 verse 21 The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets My virgin and my young men are fallen by the sword Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger Thou hast killed is not pitied Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about So that in the day of the Lord's anger None escaped nor remained Those that I have swaddled and brought up is mine enemy consumed? That's it on that chat, yeah. yeah. So there it is, man. Yeah. And we're going into a great time of lamentation, mourning, and war. It's on the third war, specifically. And there's going to be side, side quests, be side traumas, side pestilences, and all these shit's going to come at once. Well, slowly and slowly, and it's going to ramp up, it's going to increase as a woman in travail, how the Lord spreads it. So they're going to become more intense and more frequent. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Right? Jacob's trouble, you know, it's fastly approaching. And that's going to be, you know, the worst time again throughout. That's going to surpass any other time in history. It's going to surpass World War I, World War II, transatlantic slave trade. Okay. Any <coughs> period of time right, where, you know, wickedness has been prevalent. And if you study history and understand <laughs> the horrific nature of you know, the first two wars and third, those events, especially transatlantic slave trade, Hellenization. You need to think what on earth could be worse than that? And I put it in scope. What on earth could be worse than that? But you have to remember on the other, on the flip side, it says that the kingdom, you know, is is gonna be more glorious than anything we could imagine, anything that we could be through the the inverse of how bad Jacob's trouble will be, the kingdom will be much better than that. You know? So this is Jeremiah 37, 36. Did ask you now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces turn into paleness? They're saying, ask well, do the men give birth or what? You know, because these men are falling out like, like they're giving birth, like they're trying to push a you up. Verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, that none is like it. it, is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he should be saved out of it. And when that he, the brother clarified already, is that is whosoever will be written in the book of life, so that's the elect of the nation of Israel, that's who will be saved. Verse 8, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I'll break his yoke from off thy neck, and I'll burst his bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves with him. For they shall serve Yahweh their power, and David their king, whom I'll raise up unto them. So that's that's the, the horrific time we're going to go through. You know, there's going to be a, a beautiful and glorious time to come after that. You know? right. Better uh, is the end of a thing than the beginning. You know? for, in order for things to get better, you know, it gets worse first. That's right. So what are the main things to watch out from from now? The increase in war, war, you know, world war, the increase in fuel prices, the inflation prices eventually leading to famine. Instability between nations, you know, any governmental uh, passings of laws or decrees regarding social security, right, regarding ID, regarding currency, regarding the charagna. You know, these are just a few of the things to be watching out for, measuring the times. So now we're going to get into an article uh, from end time, an end time perspective. We'll say. Example of what signs to be watching for. So this is from endtimeheadlines.org, dated April 
the 11th, 2023, the hopeful year that all prophecies have come to pass. And the headline reads, Major fire at recycling plant in Indiana prompts evacuation of more than 2,000 residents could burn for days. Okay, and it goes into more than 2,000 residents were told to evacuate Tuesday afternoon after a large fire broke out at a recycling plant in Indiana, sending plumes of black smoke into the sky. The fire broke out in the city of Richmond, which is about 70 miles east of Indianapolis and near Ohio's western border. According to Fox News, Indiana State Police said the blaze was at the former Ofco factory, which closed in 2009. Wayne County EMA said the evacuation order applied to residents and persons within 0.5 miles of the fire. Those outside that zone were advised to keep windows closed and pets inside. Richmond Mayor Dave Snow described it as a serious large scale fire. Many units are on scene, Snow said. Please avoid this area if possible as it is dangerous and allow our first responders room to get this under control. The smoke is definitely toxic said the Indiana State Fire Marshal on scene, according to Fox 59. This fire is going to burn for a few days, he added. Bethesda Worship Center offered temporary shelter for people forced out of their homes, while other agencies were trying to arrange hotel rooms if necessary. Later Tuesday, Mayor Snow said fire officials had contained the blaze on the city's northwest side and are working to contain the east side to prevent spread. I'll sit on that article, can't and the whole of America is going to get turned into a lake of fire. You know, you see the materials that they use, you know, <laughs> some of them would create toxic smoke and instead of destroy them, but destroy the earth. Right. You know, Babylon the Great is the chief place of where all this destruction, as much as they like to talk about environment and this and this and that and this and that, it's all bullshit. But they're the ones that are destroying and defiling the earth. You know, the Lord, the Lord is, even if it's so-called man-made, any you know, disaster, the Lord is within that. You know, that incorruptible spirit is in all things. So the Lord puts on the spirit of people. You know, he's turning up in an already time of, you know, financial crisis, this, this and that. You know, that's, already, that's already what's happening. We've already had them trail, train derailments as well, you know. There's a lot, again, it's a chess game. You know, just because it's not a main thing, just because the queen's not gone yet. You know, the pawns are slowly pushing, you know. Amos chapter 3 verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord Yahweh, Baha Shami Shai, has not done it? Yes, this is Isaiah 45 and 7. I form, what does it say? I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Right? I, Yahweh, do all these things. So the Heavenly Father is in all of this. You know? So watch out famines, pestilences, wars, rumors of wars. All these things are coming to pass, man. It's, it's the time of repentance. Now more than ever. Now is our salvation nearer than we need. Look at 2 Maccabees chapter 15, verse 16. Take this holy sword, a gift from Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, with the which you shall wound the adversaries. And spiritually, we've used that today as the scriptures, man. So it's sharp than the two inch sword. So we pray it's been edifying, exalting. The more honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well, never the word of doctrine. Shalom unto the elect of the nation of Israel. All praises, Kah Halal Yumla, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kudash. Shalom. Shibash Shalom.